Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. What a delight it is to be with you today. Thank you so very much for being part of the broadcast. And I pray that the broadcasts are an encouragement to you in your walk with the Lord, in your understanding of the Word of God, and hopefully, too, an encouragement to you to share the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ using tracts and just using an eyeball-to-eyeball presentation of the gospel with those who do not know Christ. My Bible right now sits open to 1 John chapter 2. Turn there with me, please. And as you're turning, let me just say a personal note, I drove all night last night to get home to see my wife. You say, Brother Mark, why did you do that? Well, now this broadcast will not air the day before my anniversary, but as I make it, it's the day before my anniversary. I will be married 35 years as of tomorrow as I make the broadcast. The Lord Jesus Christ has blessed me beyond measure in giving me Nancy to be my wife. I needed to say that I, as a as a tribute to her, as a gratefulness, a full grateful heart to God, and for you to know that this ministry is able as enabled to do what it does because of godly, godly, a uh, godly wife uh, behind me and a godly staff here. Now, friend, if you have a godly wife, a godly husband, uh, you have much to be grateful for, and uh, you know, understand that, and you can rejoice with me. Well, First John chapter 2, please. Uh, did, do you remember practicing your penmanship during your elementary school grade days? Do, do, do children actually practice penmanship anymore? I, I sure hope they do. Well, some time ago, a man named Mitchell Bronk wrote about when he was a young schoolboy, and he practiced his penmanship in what were called back then copy books. And at the top of the page of the copy book, there was a pattern of what each letter was supposed to look like. And it was a guide. But he told in his in his article that the farther away from the from the example uh, from the guide that he got down the page, the worse his penmanship became, and he was not alone. Then the school board bought new copy books, different ones, and the new ones, the new ones let you move the pattern down the page, and because the pattern was always directly there on the line where the students were writing, their penmanship improved dramatically. Now, friend. You and I have a pattern to follow, but I'm not talking about a pattern for our penmanship, although many of us could use <laughs> use help with our penmanship, but the pattern I'm referring to is a pattern for how we live our daily lives. Our pattern is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Well, how are you and I doing in following the pattern of Christ in our daily lives? Let's talk about that today here on Bible Track Echoes. In my hand right now is a gospel track entitled, I Have Plenty of Time. Now, friend, this track is designed to really be used with primarily teenagers and people that are in their early 20s. This is a very short track. It's not very long. That's done by design. Some of our tracks are longer, some are shorter. But this one, I Have Plenty of Time, is directed at young people who think they have, well, they have a hold of the world, and uh, they have an oyster, and it, and the world is theirs to possess, and little do they realize how short life can be. Life is uncertain, and God has warnings for all of us, including young people. This is a track, I Have Plenty of Time, designed for young people. I'd like to send it to you, please. If you have young people uh, in your family, uh, you have young people that are teen, that are your grandbabies, you work with young people at your church, uh, your young people in your neighborhood. If you have young people that you want to impact with the gospel, here it is. Here's the track. I have plenty of time. Now, our announcer is going to make known to you three different ways to communicate with us at the end of this broadcast. Be ready to pick out the way that best suits you, and let's be partners together. I'll send you this track as part of a sample packet of all of our English gospel tracks. Get a, get ready for that, won't you please? Well, come with me now, the book of 1 John chapter 2. Let me read, please, verses 3 through 6. They say this, 
And hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. He that saith, I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith, I abide in him, ought himself also so to walk, even as he, that is Christ, walked. I stopped reading right there. A few days ago, we were actually with these verses here, verses 3 through 6. And those who were listening regularly to the broadcast may remember that I was there. My, my question on that broadcast was this. How can I know that I know Christ? And simply because I want to keep uh, the continuity of our study in First John together, I'm going to include these verses here even though we dealt with them in fairly recent days. And the the highlight of this message, again, uh, for today's broadcast is simply that you and I would be able to examine ourselves. Are you and I in the faith? Again, I remind you that these verses do not are not given for you and I to examine and evaluate somebody else's salvation. They are given for you and I that to evaluate our own. Now, on that earlier broadcast, I emphasized that the word know, K-N-O-W, used for, is used four times in verses three through six. And this word, this word know, K-N-O-W, refers to a knowledge of personal experience in contrast to simply a knowledge based upon, well, book study. Our verses deal with those who say they have had a personal experience with the Lord Jesus Christ as being their Savior. Now, saying that, as you know, that saying that Christ is your Savior is one thing. Actually being saved and experiencing the saving grace of Christ can be totally something else. I need to emphasize two words that begin with the letter I today. The first one is this. The word is implementation. Implementation. The second word is imitation. Now, I use these words because the, they help us identify the two key marks, uh, the two key identifying marks that reveal a true believer in Jesus Christ. Now, for me to have confidence that I truly know Jesus Christ as Savior, I need to be displaying these two identifying marks. Number one, the word is implementation. It covers verses three, four, and five. When somebody is implementing something, it means that they are actually using or putting into practice either a plan or a tool. Now, what plan or or what tool do true believers put into use that non-believers do not? Well, that that tool is the Word of God. Our verses say that we keep K-E-E-P, we keep his commandments. That's what verse 3 says. And in verse 5, we keep his words. Remember, you and I are not called upon to keep God's word from being damaged or stolen. That's God's job. Protecting God's word from being lost is too great a task for our feeble bodies and feeble strength and feeble minds. We are, though, expected to keep God's word at, well as a private investigator would keep watch, keep surveillance over a suspect. Whenever a person go, uh, wherever a person goes that a, that a private investigator is, fo- is watching, wherever that person goes uh, that is being watched, uh, that is where the private investigator goes. He keeps surveillance on the subject. Now, you and I are to keep God's commandments and God's word under surveillance. Where it goes, we go. When it stops, we stop. Uh, we are to be implementing God's word in our lives. Now, as we do that, two things in our verses will happen. The Bible will regulate our life, according to verse 4. It will regulate us as to what we do and what we say. The second thing is that the Bible will stimulate our love. It will regulate our living and it will stimulate our loving. Look again at verse 5. But whoso keepeth his word in him verily truly is the love of God perfected, matured, and hereby know we that we are in him. That's what our goal is. I want to know, I want great assurance that I really have the real McCoy salvation experience. Now, the other word that begins with the letter I is the word imitate. Now, verse 6 says that true believers imitate the life of Christ. 
A a strong word is used in verse 6. It's our English word ought, O-U-G-H-T. It's a word that, that expresses duty, expresses responsibility, and expectedness. Saints are expected to pattern their lives after the Lord Jesus Christ. And why would they, we not want to do that? He is the Christ, the Son of the living God. He's the one that died for us. It is Christ that rose from the dead for us. It is Christ, whoever lives to pray on our behalf at the right hand of the Father to help us. Why would we not want to pattern our lives and imitate him? In the last line of verse 6, we read that we are to walk Notice the words, even as, those two words, even as Jesus, he walked. We are, so, we are to compare our daily way of living to the way that Jesus Christ lived. We are not told to guess what would Jesus do, what would Jesus think, what might he do, what might he have done. That's not our goal. You and I are told to find out what Jesus actually did do, find out what he did, actually did say, what he did think. No, listen, my friend. You and I cannot, are not going to do the miracles that Jesus did. Now, do I believe God does miracles in our day? Absolutely. Do I believe that God gives individual saints the gift of doing miracles? No. I think God does them all by himself when he wants to and doesn't do them when he doesn't want to, all for his glory. Now, my friend, now Jesus did miracles, and you and I are not going to do miracles, but as you and I Uh, live our lives, we are to walk as he did. And the passage here is about loving people, loving God and loving one another. Jesus loved people, lost people, saved people, but also Jesus served people. He served lost people. He served saved people. Jesus practiced humility with lost people and saved people. He's our pattern. How are we doing with our loving, our serving, and our being humbled before people? Jesus perfectly combined a compassion, a compassionate caring for the earthly needs of people, while at the same time he communicated to them their spiritual need to receive him as their Savior and Lord. Jesus came that men might gain eternal life. That is not what he might have done. That is what he actually did do. Now, Let's go and follow his example. Dear friend, I've just addressed this broadcast primarily, really, to believers. If you're listening to me today and you do not know Jesus Christ as Savior, you can read the Bible and try to model your life after him the best you want, and you could probably do a halfway decent job at that. But having the model is not enough. You must have everlasting life in your soul. And the only way you get that is that you must admit your sinfulness, repent of your sin, and receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. That's why he died, to pay for your sins. That's why he rose, to give you eternal life. Oh, receive him today. If you do that, contact us. Let us help you grow. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.